Hey guys, welcome back to Parker Tech University. In today's episode, I want to show you how to make some unique roller coaster elements for your coasters. So these ones are going to be more like realistic ones in real life. I went on a studying binge on coaster elements. There's like quite a good number of them. I think there's like 20 plus elements out there. And I tried to replicate the majority of them and I found that I couldn't do everything possible unless you have a mod. So again, this is going to be completely 100% modless, only uh, Parkitect Vanilla, and we're going to go from there. So the elements we're probably going to start off with is probably this one right here. This is a banana roll, which is kind of like a cobra, but not. And these are usually on Gerslauer, General Fighters, or of something of that type. So I'm going to build this one first, and we're going to go down the line. Um, this is a zero G roll. This is a bow tie, and then this is an Immelman, which is using a different th set of track pieces I will show you that later but that kind of actually this track here and this track here kind of do the same method I'll show you both that but I will build one coaster with the banana roll and then I'll build the second coaster actually with these three elements included so let's get started let's go over to find uh, I'm going to use the Eurofighter actually I can use the inverted spinning coaster because it's the same track type now we're just going to stick with the uh, this one Um, let's see here. Let's go over here and build it up. I want to build a very quick coaster. It's going to be like very ugly, but let's just do the simple chain lifts. Um, up, 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 up. Let's do it. Um, let's do this type of turnaround. It kind of drops. And then we'll drop into the banana roll. So, banana roll. Let's start off with a half loop. And we can either make it left or right. It makes the, uh, banana roll looks cooler so we're just going to do right so it kind of spins funny and instead of doing a corkscrew I'm going to use a turn piece and it has to be a size 2 because I think that's the best one to look and I'm going to bend it about 80 90 degrees let's do 80 80 degrees actually right about here and we'll do two of them this one will be straight on the back to 180 and then we're going to go back down, make sure that it is still two size half loop. And then we're going to make this go inward like itself so it makes it cool. And then we're just going to try to get ourselves back to the station here. I'm just going to, you know, kind of mess around. Well, I really don't. It's not supposed to be that, that you know, that best of a coaster. So we'll just do this. Back to the station. So we can see it do its thing. There we go, and then exit entrance, and then let's see it go. Here, let's fast forward, so we can see this thing in its, you know, action. So banana rolls are kind of like a, it's kind of like a non-inverted, but it is an inverted element. I, the only thing that I wish that was possible in Parkinson, but it's probably possible in um, Ghost of Anarchy, probably, is that the loops probably need to start banking right here, but this works and it looks like a banana roll from the pictures and references I've seen. So I'm okay with it. I'm not like completely bent out of shape about it. But yeah, this is the first element that I kind of worked on it. I like it. It looks cool. And it makes your coasters, you know, unique. And it does give a inversion rating, I think it does. Let's see here. Let's see. It says three drops, two inversions. So it, it counts it as two, actually, not one. That's actually interesting. So that's banana roll. Let's go on to the second coaster. So let's delete this. So we're going to make ourselves... This is off to the floor's coaster. We're going to do a zero G roll, which is very generic. And it's most coasters have them. This is a bow tie, which is kind of a different version of a bat wing. And then an Immelman is kind of like... It's a half loop and usually a corkscrew piece that goes in. But there's a different piece that I use. So let's do the floorless coaster. Put it over here. Usually they lift a coaster up off the floor because that's realistic what coasters do. They don't sit on the floor unless, no, no, most coasters don't do that. So let's just make it very simple. So we have to make this one a little higher than usual because I want to get through these elements. We're going to do a very, let's do an actual, um, a B&M drop off. I think it's about that. That, that makes sense. I don't know. I, yeah, let's just try this out make a B and M drop and then we'll make this turn into the first drop 
Yeah, we'll keep it off the ground. I'll keep it off the ground because it's not realistic. So we'll do an Immelman. Immelman usually go from start from here and go up through the element. So we're gonna do a straight and then a half loop. We're gonna keep the half loop pretty straight. And I think I should make it a three because three is probably the better. Now, most people would probably do this a um, corkscrew left or right. And I found out that that is okay to do an Immelman, but that's like copying an actual like arrow dynamics Immelman because that's when we're like old old school. But um, B and M did a little different thing, so I'm going to use a turn like I did with the banana roll. And I'm going to twist it this way, actually. The other, yeah, there we go. We're going to twist about zero degrees. Actually, let's twist it to 15 degrees so we can go into a turn when we reach the bottom. So let's do about. I think this is the best. Yeah, no, it's this one. It has to be one slope down. That's the only way turns work. And then we'll extend it. Yeah, let's keep that three. And then now we can do. We can either go into a straight, or we can go into a turn. Which I like doing it in a turn because I think the turn makes more sense. Or and actually, let's just just do a straight into a straight that we can actually turn to the left, so we can make you know crazy G's. And then I'm just gonna make it kind of loop up and around itself, kind of dip around and dip under itself like this. And then we're gonna get back to the station. Actually, no, we have to go into the next element. So there you go, there's a, a true Immelman. Now an Immelman and a dive loop are the same elements, just one way you're going the other way. So the dive loop will be going from this direction into the corkscrew, into the half loop and out. So those are kind of basically the same element. I just don't, there's no point to show you, but you could do this backwards as well. It's kind of a little bit more difficult because you have to kind of set yourself up with a probably a half slope or a one slope up to get the turn up into that corner. Hold, I am trying to give my trains more cards. There we go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> okay, let's go into a zero G roll. So, a zero G roll usually is a quarter slope. It can even be a half slope. Actually, let's do a half slope. I do one edge like this, and I usually do the half slope down that makes this little arch. This little arch is actually the best way to do a zero G. I maybe make about eight, eight squares long sometimes, maybe not necessarily. You can even do it at six or seven, but eight looks more looks good. Like we get this extra set of supports, which is actually wonky right now. Okay, supports need to be fixed. So there is, oh no, it fixes itself in the build in the build preview is kind of funny. So here's the zero G roll. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough energy to build the bow tie. Maybe I will. Yeah, bow ties are interesting. So we're gonna try it. We have to just go up though a little bit. So we're gonna go up. Eh, about, we're probably gonna build it underground a little bit because most bow ties in real life are probably built below ground like a bat wing. So it's kind of built in a weird sense. So we're going to do, actually, we need to do a turn so we can get ourselves back. It's okay now, we'll figure this out. Okay, so let's just do a corkscrew. I could do this with the turn technique I was doing earlier, but I think the corkscrews actually work better. So there's a three-sized corkscrew into a four-sized half loop. This might not work. Actually, it might. Let's see here. There's some collision issues. Yeah, there's, just, there's some collision issues. So it would be actually a... So we're going to make this a 2. We're going to make this a 4. Oh, I'm below ground. Shoot. Okay. So I have to go higher. Okay. So we'll go like this. Into a 2 size corkscrew. And a 4 sized because you can do this actually with straights here, put some straight track, but it kind of looks wonky. So we're going to do a four-sized half loop, and then back to a two-sized. There we go. Now that is a bow tie, because it goes into the element this way. This is this is actually wrong. This shouldn't be like this, but we're, I'm showing you how to build the element. So this it goes in one direction and come out a different direction out into said 
next element or next area or whatever you want to do for this element. I say that this element is actually the mo more harder one to do and it's kind of depends on where you want to put it in the park but it does go underground a little bit. You can, you know, remove the ground and do whatever you want with that but let's just get back to the station and then watch the whole coaster do its thing. So that's four, okay. Okay, we're gonna do a half. Actually, no wait, I should have not done this. Okay, we're just gonna go straight. There we go, that's better. Oh look at that, it's so exactly a four. So we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna track ourselves toward it. I don't really care how like it's not gonna be that good actually. It's gonna be really bad on the G's here. But it's okay. It's really okay. <laughs> Here, I'll do a S bend into a, the break run. This is really ugly. I wouldn't do this. I would actually be more cautious on how to do this. But again, this is just showing you how to do the elements that I showed. So we're just going to go like this. Here we go. And then we're going to go test. So here we go. Let's go see the three elements that I built for this coaster the Immelman 0G and the Bowtie, which is basically a Batwing. Batwing goes the other direction. So, oh, let's hurry up. Okay, there we go. Let's go into the first one, a ML. Yeah, I think this looks better than the corkscrew piece because it gives that like very clear smoothness to it. And then with this downgrade here, you can go up into a turn or down into a further turn this way or the other way. So, oh, we forgot the zero G. It's okay. Here comes the. What's it called? Shoot. I know what this is. <laughs> oh, I've been talking about it. Bowtie. Yeah, I kind of went slow on this bowtie, but I lost a lot of energy. So let's watch this again. Do the zero G. Now, Parkitect has this issue with not heartlining, because they don't really heartline. So a zero G is not... Oh, no, it's not really heartline. I think it's more for the coaster. Actually, I'm not sure I should have done more research on that. But this does look proper to be a zero G roll. You can even do a tighter one where it's more pin pinched up to the top. You could do that. There it goes through the zero G. I actually went through that quick, quite quickly. And then here comes the bow tie. One more time. Yeah, I think this looks good. So these are the elements that I figured out that are possible in Park Tech's Coaster Builder. Um, anything else that I can shine a light on? I might make another video on more stuff if I can continue to experiment on the elements. But yeah, I think this looks good. And um, I hope this video helps you on making your questions more realistic. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye.